too. This right. meeting is being recorded. All right. I am here with Liesl Ehlers. I'm really stoked because it's been a while since we last, we actually talked and, you know, I figured this is the perfect time because let's just face it, we both had a busy year in 2022, but I'm really stoked. I mean, for those of you who don't know, Liesl was in the awesome movie Friend Request, another movie Trigger. Um, she's also a singer, songwriter, martial artist. Of, um, she does it all. I, seriously, I don't know what she can't do, but uh, Liesl, I'm excited to have you on here today. Thank you so much. It's such a like honor to be chatting with you and um, yeah, just really looking forward to chat about films again. And yeah, yeah. amazing. <laughs> so how, when did you get bit by the acting bug? When did this all begin? Right. Oh, I love how we're just going into this. Um, so when I was six years old, I would tell my friends at school, I can't believe I'm telling you this, um, to call me Julia Roberts, because I was like, that's my new name. Um, I'm going to be an actress one day. I decided it after I watched Titanic for some reason. And, um, you know, I asked my parents, I was like, how does this acting thing like work? Like, I love this movie. And, you know, and they told me that there's this profession and it's called acting. Um, and I was, I was sold. I was immediately sold. And from that point forward, knew that that was my calling and that was what I was going to do. Um, and then I was in, I was the lead in our school play in primary school. And when I was in high school, I joined our cabaret for three years. And we traveled across South Africa and we performed. And yes, went to Canada, went to Vancouver to go study acting, perform on television at VADA which was pure bliss. It was amazing. Um, and met so many amazing people there. Came back to South Africa, got an agent, and yeah, the rest is kind of history. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, one of the things that you did and that came out here in Stateside was Friend Request. You yeah. were phenomenal in that movie as Marina. Like, you, you. We see you, I can't see you ever playing a villain-type role, but... <laughs> Not only did you pull it off amazingly, the makeup effects on you were just like really scared the crap out. Of me. I'm not gonna lie, like especially with the jump scares, I was just like, this cannot yeah. be the same person. There's no way that this is her. But what was that like shooting friend request? Oh, it was amazing. Um, like you said, an exceptional special effects makeup team. Um, which they're also South African, by the way, and they were just so amazing. Um, but it, it was insane. I had to learn to walk on stilts. I had a week to learn to run on stilts, and I'm, I'm not very tall. I'm like five foot two, and the stilts were my height. So <laughs> it was <laughs> insane. And I wore um, like this mechanical glove, fake teeth, really sharp teeth so i'd bite myself like so many times accidentally um contact lenses that covered like the sclera of my eyes so could barely see so couldn't you really use my arms or like my legs there was a lot of restriction with the stilts and couldn't really speak with the fake teeth and it was just this surreal experience and i loved every second of it um, if they said, okay, it's the demon scenes, I'm like, yes, let's do this, <laughs> you know, um, just so surreal. And I always say I look like a scary version of Marilyn Manson. <laughs> like, don't you think that's what I look like? Yeah, I could kind of see that. I could kind of see that Marilyn Manson vibe to it. Yeah, now I think about it. <laughs> Oh, I loved it so much. Um, and yeah, and just getting into character and, and um, learning how to like walk. I actually went for lessons to learn how to walk like a demon, which I thought was amazing. Um, you know, just getting into character and um, all of that was just so stunning. I really liked Marina as a character as well. When I auditioned, I didn't know that I was going to play the demon version of Marina as well. So... I only knew about Marina. Um, and then it just ended up being this amazing experience where I got to wear prosthetics and, and kind of full on prosthetics, like covered like up to my chest, 
um, yeah, it was prosthetics. It was just so, so amazing. And I'm so grateful for that experience. That's awesome. And so um, to prepare for this, have you always loved the horror genre in a way? Or did this like segue you into watching more horror films? <laughs> I did love horror films because I think horror movies would always make me, like take me back to that nostalgic, it has that sense of nostalgia to it for me. Um, back in high school, visiting a friend, uh, a group of girls sleep over and we're like, okay, let's watch Soul, you know, and everybody's just so scared to go to the bathroom afterwards because they're like, <laughs> you know, that kind of, that memory, I think that's what horror does for a lot of people. It's like a coming together of, we're all gonna be super scared now. We're all gonna have this very like um, connected experience and there's something thrilling about that. But but it's, having said that, I, I never was really someone who would like binge on that many horror movies. Um, but yes, Friend Request definitely opened that world for me and, and made me realize how amazing horror movie fans are. They are amazing. Like, shout out to them. Oh, yeah. They, they are wonderful. And I was so, so blessed to, like, have had, yeah, the opportunity <laughs> to have people reach out to me and then just really be, be super kind. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. I, I, I spoke with a horror film director a few years back, and he said, like, the horror film community is like a family. You know, they're just like any, they're just kind of family. And I got my first taste of horror as like six years old. And it was, it was a uh, nightmare on Elm Street too. And it was, it was my, my brother invited me to our upstairs near her house. Like, oh, we're going to watch a movie and realize it was nightmare on Elm Street too. And I think the reason he did this, and this is my theory that my mom used to cover my eyes when, uh, <laughs> when we watched Jason and, you know, back then we had one TV. So when we were watching Friday the 13th. My mom would cover my eyes whenever Jason killed someone. So I think he wanted, I think deep down he was crazy and just wanted me to get to see what it was like to watch those death scenes. But I was like, yeah. I want to learn how to do that, the special effects stuff at one point in my life. I was like, I think I might want to be a special effects artist because that's pretty, they, they put a lot of work into all that. They do. And it's literally like an art. It is art that they create. Just the fact that they have to mold the sculpture and then make molds from that and then paint and I was blown away by the artistry that goes into it. Um, and just seeing it on screen, you go like, wow, like all of that hard work paid off. And it's just, it's making this film so amazing. And it's, it's adding to the, you know, um, the whole genre really. Um, I don't know what horror movies, movies would be if there weren't, you know, special effects artists, like it probably, yeah. What's <laughs> up? So yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yeah. My all time, my all time favorite horror movie is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Only because it's not really, want... a slasher, it's not a slasher film. It's more of a psych. I see it more as a psychological horror movie because it really yeah. like messes with your head. And then, um, oh especially the shot where she's really freaking out in the dinner scene, and they have that big close up of her eyeball. Like when I saw yeah. that, this is not this is not a slasher film. And I want yeah. I got. My mom because she thought by the title it was gonna be oh he can't watch this it's gonna be a slasher movie and then i remember <laughs> i finally saw it and i looked at it I'm like mom why is it? it wasn't even that bloody okay first of all so it's like yeah. I, but that's my but all that, that is my all-time favorite pretty, yes that is a brilliant yeah 100 percent. i still remember watching that film at a friend's house and um yeah the effect it had on me i thought it was yeah it was brilliant Super it scary, but perfect. it didn't turn you off to like meat, did it at all? Because <laughs> I got quite a <laughs> kind of I got quite a funny story because my film studies mentor wanted to yeah. borrow my copy of it, so I lent it to her, and she said she had to. And I the next week she gave it to me. She's like, I had to turn it off like ten minutes into the movie, and I'm like, what scene? She goes, where they're passing by the cows. Like I couldn't watch the rest of it after that when the van passes the the field full of cows. Really? And then, yeah. and then, funny enough, I lent it to a classmate, and she said the same exact thing a week later. When the band passes the cows, I could not finish the movie. I'm like, 
Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But I get that. I get I that. It's a meat after that, so it's pretty yeah. fun. Yes. No, I can totally get that. <laughs> no, but I feel like that is definitely one of the yeah one of the gems of the horror genre for sure. Definitely. Um, and it will just always remain, you know, one of those films where you just look back and if you just want to rewatch it to kind of feel how you felt when you saw it the first time. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I just watched it a few months ago. And I was like, I still love this movie to this day. Just like I watched it <laughs> triggered today for like the 60th something time. I still like, I still can't, I, I, I will never get sick of that movie as long as I live. I love this movie so much. And I love that you love the movie so much. <laughs> it makes and, me so happy. And I've heard so many stories of on the set. You know, I've heard it from a couple of your co-stars how much they had, how much fun they had making that movie. And so now I would love to hear your side of the story, like what, how much fun you had making Triggered, because that I mean, it's such an original concept, in my opinion. It had some fun little goofy pop culture references. And you actually go the opposite direction this time, where you were the you were the villain in Friend Request. You're now the final girl in Triggered. So you went, you got full 180 here. And I would love to hear your thoughts on what was it like making Triggered? Where do I even start? Um, <laughs> so a bunch of actors who are all the same age, really, and get along so well are left in the woods <laughs> to, to act um, just as you can imagine it's just jokes and all of us just sliding around in the mud and um, I don't know if um, Raina who plays Ryan if she told you about this but there was um, quite a hectic rain uh, the first week of shooting so kind of like the whole woods it like it flooded a bit so we were like stepping in puddles. Some people slipped and fell. Like it, it got really intense. And I think as an actor, when when something like that happens, you go, yay, like this is gonna add to it. This is gonna make it more real. And um, it was just so amazing. I think Alistair also had a really clear vision of what he wanted. So for us as actors, we could just slot in and just go for it. Um, I had, yeah, the best time. Like my favorite scenes were the ones where I was like getting down, like gritty, like, you know, like I'm crawling in the mud or um, I have to limp because I got stabbed in the leg, you know. Uh, that's my favorite scenes. The scenes where you can kind of just go into it, like like your, your body, like everything, like you just, give it your all because you can just, I want to get lost in this moment. And for me, it's usually when there's like some physicality to the scene, like yeah, a fight scene or um, just running around in the woods. And, and that is basically triggered. It's just us <laughs> running around in the woods. <laughs> um, and yeah, obviously getting to shoot a gun, that was a lot of fun. And, and that was a one take, <laughs> which I'm right. really proud of. I um, say you have the best line right before you shoot you use the gun that's one of the best lines ever in like a, a horror like any type like one of the best lines I've ever heard where he said I don't have to kill you I just have to outlast you I was like bam <laughs> that hit me when, when I heard that oh I'm glad that makes me so happy because I love that line and I as an actor I was like don't screw this up Liesl don't screw this line up <laughs> Like, make sure it lands, you know? Um, so that makes me very happy to hear. Um, and how much did you enjoy the hilarious things that popped up on the vests? Like the, um, just just the things that Alistair oh, thought yeah, of. Like, like, like when Raina had hers, it said nerd. Uh, yes. Right before Kato pulls up, it says F you on it. Yeah, I loved all that. And then, yeah. Of course, your and, and, like, your friends are dead. Have a nice life. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like, I love that and we didn't know about this like we we knew that they were gonna do something but when I watched the film for the first time I was like oh okay great is that what it's gonna say you know um so oh, no that that was amazing and I think the camaraderie on set was just 
really exceptional. The crew got along really well. Like I said, us as actors bonded so well. We're still friends today. So, you know, it's one, one of those really special memories for me. I think I'd always look back to that and just think, like, what a blessing that movie was in my life. And, um, and it's great to get a chance to play the final girl. And I'm sorry if I'm, if we're spoiling this for people who haven't seen it. You know it's already been two and a half years since, well, we got it before. <laughs> We got it in the states before you guys got it in South Africa. We got it a few months yeah. prior. So, it, so, but I will say, you know, I talked with both Raina and Cameron, and they were talking about how you guys got along offset. You know, you got to do all the stuff, and then yeah. Cameron, Cameron dropped the bomb that Russell won the laser tag thing. So it was like it was <laughs> destiny that he would be the, the main villain because since he won laser tag. <laughs> yes, that was the most fun that we went to go play laser tag. Like that was amazing. Um, I sucked at it really badly, <laughs> well, <laughs> which I'm I feel. Not, I'm bad. Which at I it. feel, Aaron would also not be that great at laser tag, maybe. Um, so it made sense. But yeah, it was it was hilarious that Russell did so well. Um, and how great! How great is Russell? Can we yeah. just have a moment to just go? Yeah. Well done, was, Russell. He was great in that movie. I mean, he was just. He reminded me of the character in, of Kiriyama in Battle Royale. Like, he just became this total psychopath and just ready to just, like, kill anyone his way. He doesn't care who it was. It's yes. Just, bam. And kudos oh. to the cast. I mean, that was I, was... I tell people, you know, you got to have great chemistry to make an ensemble cast work. And by far, Triggered is one of the best ensemble casts. I've seen because you all had that natural chemistry. It made it so much easier to resonate with you guys where you see these rom-com ensemble casts and someone feel forced and it just doesn't seem right, but you guys just made the whole thing work. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy that that um, is something that you can pick up, you know, when you watch the film, because that is really what it was like. And there was just so much laughter and just, yeah, like friendships built and, memories made that we'll, we'll all just look back to and think yes what an amazing experience i have to tell you um so when bobby blows up um we had to use obviously like a fake mannequin mm -hmm. um to look like the body parts are like you know going everywhere <laughs> we never found his head um we could only find his arms and his torso and everything so i sometimes think you know, some innocent person is gonna r go horse riding because that's what they use those woods for. Yeah. And some kid maybe, and then there's gonna be like, look there, there's like some guy's head just lying there. So I'm always like, you know, I just wonder who who f found the head. Like, um. So we had lots of jokes about that, and I could I um, could picture that saying, "Oh, um, I think the headless horseman f uh, found his missing head somewhere um, in the yeah, <laughs> yes, in exactly. the woods." <laughs> that, was that was crazy, but stuff think, like that that happens makes it so much fun. Makes it will, such a yeah. cool experience. Yeah. I'll tell you this though: triggered actually became my segue into get ready for this. I've been watching a lot more South African movies as of late. That's one of the things. Oh. It's that became my segue film. That was my gateway film to watching more South African movies. Like, That's amazing. I've watched some before, like the older ones, but now I've watched the more like I've watched the more recent ones because our YouTube actually has some of these movies on there. So I'm like, all right, I need to start checking some of these out. And yeah. you know, I've seen a whole bunch with Reina, like I've seen Deep Pro, um, Somer's Son, uh, Van Der Meer with her and Rob, Brent Van Buren. I mean, I've actually seen these movies and it's it became my uh, and I was like, I, I don't know why these movies are not out in the US because they need to be. I, like I really like I That makes me so happy to hear. That that makes me so happy to hear because you know, like as a South African actor, we sometimes wonder um how would these Afrikaans movies or like films that we just keep as like a local form, how would would they resonate with an international audience um, or not, you know? And yeah. that's so lovely to hear. And by the way, have you seen Raina's amazing movie, Hex? I have the so, movie, yes, I have. She's such a great director. And I'm hoping she does get to direct 
get a chance to direct again. So I think she did a tremendous job on that. Raina is one of those people where she's so humble and, and you're just blown away by her because she is so talented. Um, and yeah, like probably one of the kindest and most beautiful people I've ever met. And, and she just has this, like, yeah, so, so talented. Um, and I can't wait to see what she's going to do next. I feel like yeah. everything, every project that she's involved in is just amazing. It you is. know, she's, she, she's wonderful. She can, she can, and she does so well in front of the screens, like not just in the pro where she gets like, you know, she plays this determined surfer type. But also, you know, yeah. Vandermeer, where she's like, you know, she gets me, she gets ribbed on by her dad, and you know, I, yes. I, I, I tell people, Vandermeer is like my big fat Greek wedding meets father of the bride, basically. It's that's what it basically is. Yeah. Yes, yes, that is. And I, you know, Somer's son, she only had a small role. She said she had so much fun making that, and then Z Nation, where she played the news reporter on the, on that series, like she, she, she just lights up the screen and anything, like whenever she's in front. Exactly. And and I remember specifically in Triggered, like I was so lucky to have a couple of scenes where it was just her and I. And I can honestly say, and I've said this to her afterwards as well, that she brought out the better, like the best version of me acting wise. Like we would like kind of work off of each other's energy and um, and kind of push each other to, to really like do well and to like, do our best and um it was so easy to stay in the emotion when you know for example that scene where we're both crying and um you know she confesses everything it was so easy for us to do a couple of takes and still be like bawling and crying because it was easy for us to stay in the scene with each other and to like push each other to to stay there and to do better um i think anybody who gets a chance to work with her is so lucky and I do feel the same way about Alicia Debnam Carey and friend request. Um, I, yeah, she's probably one of the like rare actors that I've worked with where she, she doesn't try hard. She's so subtle with her performance. Um, it's just so believable. And I, I felt like I learned so much from her during that experience that she would just I don't know. She's just so natural with what she does. She's just really naturally gifted. And I think um, she's also amazing. I heard she's going to play the lead in Saint X. I think that's coming to Hulu soon. Yeah. yeah um, and she, she just finished uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Like she ended up yes. on that for a while. Yeah, yeah so. she did for so long. I think like four years, maybe. Yeah. She, she was, yeah, for quite a while. And then um, I think she's amazing. Yeah. And then I spoke with, uh, um, I've also talked to Cameron Scott, and he had so much, so much nice things to say, you know, and we talked about Ring of Beasts, and then we veered off into some, and then we talked a little bit about Triggered, and the Kissing Booth 3, you know, he's, he's, get, he's becoming one of those ones that, that, that's rising up the ladder, and I'm glad, yeah. I, I'm so, I'm so stoked for him, and, you know, he, when he, he found out that you were into martial arts, you know, he said, you know, I should put her in, because I think he's trying to expand Ring of Beasts. At one at right now, he's trying to work on an extension of it. And I think he said he wanted to cast you eventually in one of those one of those <laughs> projects and have you do a fight scene because I, I I tell people this. I'm like, you know, when I found out you did martial arts and you know you had that physicality and triggered, I'm like, I think Liesel needs to do a, a, maybe one day an action film where she gets to show those skills off. I think I think it's deserving because she, you know, we we need we need more female action heroes who need who have that skill set already and not just train for the film. You know, I understand. The Thank you. you. I really appreciate that. Because um, that's why I got into martial arts um, in the first place was I auditioned for a film that was shot in South Africa with Samuel L. Jackson. And obviously I was like, I I really need I think I to be in this film. And I think I know uh, what this movie is. I have a good idea. I think I know what this movie you're talking about. Do you, do you know what it is? Kite. Kite? I think it's that's what Kite. the is. It's kind. I knew it. Um, it. It is that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and like literally, it was between me and one other actress. So I met with the directors and the producers, and they were like, yeah, "Okay, it's great. We are gonna make our final decision. We're gonna have one session. 
where you and the other actress are going to meet with the stunts trainer, um, the stunts choreographer, and he's going to show you how to do a scene and we're going to film it. You're only going to get one shot to do it. Um, <laughs> and at that point, can I just give you some reference that I have two sisters. I don't have any brothers. Um, I used to be the drama kid in school, so I didn't do any sports. Like, no, I've never kicked a ball type thing, you know, like no sports. Um, and then I did, to the best of my ability, I tried to do this really hectic um, stunt, like scene where you like stab someone with a knife in the neck and then you do like a roll and get up. And like, it was quite intense. Um, and yeah, I didn't get it. That was the one thing that- Yeah, and I know who, that, beat, you know. I know who beat you out for that role because I saw, I did see Kite. I ended up did see yeah, the movie, yeah. and it was all right. I, I know people prefer the anime version, yes, live yes. action one. But true. And, then, and then funny enough, like you know, I know you were born in 1991, but during that era, a lot of martial arts films were being shot in South Africa, like the ones that would come out stateside. Like a lot of them were shot over there in South Africa. We had American Ninja Two, American Ninja Three, American Kickboxer. Terminator woman to name a few, you know, they were all shot over there in South Africa. Like that was a big area where they shot those action flicks back then. I didn't even know that. That's amazing. This is the first time I hear about this. That's so cool. <laughs> that's that's, that's so my cool. thing is I grew up watching either horror or martial arts films. I grew up with those, like those were the two main genres I grew up watching as like a kid. And so it's like, oh. and it's just, yeah, I think people, people were amazed to hear that. And then, um, you know, I and I and also, like I said, triggered segued me into South African cinema where I started researching the history. And I didn't like during apartheid, I found out that they shot, they would shoot Afrikaner filmmakers shot movies just for black audiences. And I'm like, oh my God, that's that's pretty that's pretty insane. And they they actually started releasing them here in the states. These some of these old these movies for black audiences. And I'm like, we're getting them now in, in the states. So I'm like, that's pretty wild. It is pretty wild. Yes. No. Um, I just think it's so amazing that you're, you're doing all this research and that you, you're getting into South African films. I feel like, yes, all of my friends here, all of my actor friends would just be so happy to hear that. And um, like I said, just to know that there's some international traction of people watching and enjoying the movies. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, just getting back to martial arts quickly, like um, I that that is a dream of mine. I would love to to act in an action film okay, and get hope, to. And I hope the people who are watching this interview like are in martial arts <laughs> movies and they get wind of this and they get to cast you in a movie because it. That'd uh, be amazing. Yeah, definitely. That'd be amazing. Um, and I want a sword fight as well. I want to be, there must be a sword fight in the movie, please. They must write that in as well. Sorry, what did you say? You're, you're saying you're pretty good with the sword then. Um, yes, it's my favorite. Yeah, my favorite weapon. So wink, wink to whoever's <laughs> listening to make a movie. <laughs> Um, but no, yes, I, I fell in love with martial arts that, that same day when I didn't get that role in Kite. Um, I went to the nearest dojo and I said, I do not really know what you guys do here. Because that was like my knowledge of martial arts, really. Um, but I want to join. And they were definitely skeptical. I think they were like, okay, she's going to last like a week. Next. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then seven years later... I'm, I still rock up at the dojo and still train. And um, and it was amazing to to see myself also like grow. I think I would tell, I, I would recommend martial arts to anyone. To, if you've got kids, like I make to, sure. I, used to, I mean, I used to dabble in it myself. I, I, I got involved at one point myself. Like I took, I took Shotokan and I took Shotokan karate and kickboxing and. Oh, awesome. You know. Oh, kickboxing, I love it. So used to do that too as well and and i would say like it gives you so much not just like discipline but it teaches you so much about yourself and like inner strength and your capabilities like me not having even been able to kick a ball to be honest 
and then being able to do like a 360 turning kick and have the bag move or like whatever um you know it's it's seeing how your body and can train and how you can actually excel it's it's just so rewarding um and it's it's probably one of the best decisions i feel like i've ever made in my life was to walk into that dojo and to do Hapkido, i think it's amazing oh i love um, yeah and you should know about Hapkido because i know it's not one of the most popular forms of martial arts um but it's yeah it's a lot like taekwondo but with weapons and, and a lot of grappling that's usually how right. i just quickly explain um, yeah i will say this i'm going to recommend the movie if you have not if and i'm going to recommend to you anyone who wants to who's interested in hapkido i'm going to recommend this one movie because it stars a hapkido grandmaster as the villain but he got to use that style against a famous a huge kung fu actor the movie is called the young master and in the it is a, there's like a 15 minute finale a final fight between Hapkido Grandmaster Wong Ying Chick, and it's basically him using those moves against Jackie Chan. Like the, he oh. only Hapkido. It's Jackie Chan versus Hapkido, basically. And Jackie Chan spends like 15 minutes getting his butt kicked by this Hapkido <laughs> Grandmaster. And he's using the skills. And to this day, according to the Grandmaster's website, he still thanks Jackie Chan for allowing him to actually use Hapkido and not this other, you know, not the usual style of film fighting. Like Jackie wanted him oh, to show yeah. those skills in the movie. Why haven't I seen this? Thank you so much. I yes. am gonna go watch this film ASAP. <laughs> That's amazing. I, yeah. I can't wait to watch this. Yeah. That is just so great. So good. Yay. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just the kicking, the joint locking, the grappling, all that. Yeah. It's just a. I love it's, it. So for those of you who want to see like real Hapkido in action, that's the movie. And there is actually a movie called Hapkido. Um, it actually stars Angela Mao, Sammo Hung. It's an old movie from like the 70s. And um, Angela Mao actually is a black belt in Hapkido at the time. She And her actually her, her teacher is in the movie playing her teacher in the, her teacher in real life played her teacher in the movie. And they oh, just- Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so it's, that's worth checking out too. That's amazing. And and speaking of, of teachers, that just reminded me, I had the privilege to train under um, Sahunim or like Master Vladimir Grachev, who is, I don't want to say this wrong now, I maybe just think he's a black belt in all forms of martial arts, but he's seventh dan in Hapkido. I think, I can't remember which dan he is in, in Taekwondo, but he is just an amazing instructor. And I feel like, yeah, it, it was just such a privilege to train under him. Um, and he's originally from Russia. So what, what were the chances of him moving to South Africa or coming to South Africa? Because his wife actually still lives in Russia. Um, and then being able to um, launch two dojos here and to teach us, I feel like I got so lucky the day I walked into a dojo that was just close to my house at the time and then you know but i feel like everything happens for a reason and you know like the stars align <laughs> and, and that's when you meet amazing people and have these amazing experiences and um with both my my films triggered and, and friend request that i was in i can 100 percent say i feel the same way about that like stars align amazing experience um, that I will always hold so dear to my heart. And um, yeah, like acting is just such a special thing. I wish everyone could just have like a go at acting. Like everyone could just act in a film. Like even if it's one film, like just to experience what it's like to be on set and have that thrilling, that thrilling like feeling of making a character come to life. It's, it's really, I don't always have words to describe how special that is. Yeah. Really cool. And now, now you've taken a backseat from acting now. We met yes. you earlier. You decided to take a little, take a break from acting and you're focusing on other stuff, including your music. For those of you who don't know, she is also a singer and songwriter. And I've actually had the pleasure of hearing some of the stuff she's written and she actually sang as well. And she's a great singer. And I think she needs to, I think hopefully she's going to release an album soon. I'll be the first one. <laughs> 
thank you so much. I'd like for saying that. Um, as I, I mentioned to you before we started chatting now that um, I, I had a time last year where I, where I just couldn't write at all. And now I've been inspired and like a month ago, I've written a song. So I'm just really excited to see where this journey is going to go. And hopefully the, the dream is to record um, an EP and to just release songs that I've written that I'm also um, singing and um, yeah, like, so hopefully I'll get there. I'm excited to see how that unfolds. And I also have this dream, like, in the back of my mind of um, either making a docu film, like a documentary um, about South Africa, especially because I work for a nonprofit organization now and I get to see firsthand, um, you know, the amazing work that's being done in South Africa and also from our beneficiaries experience, like what what life is like for the farm worker communities in South Africa. So I was thinking, you know, I still have this, this urge in me, like this feeling that I would love to to make a film again at some point. So yeah, well, well for, those who, for those who don't know, she did a short film called Daylight a few years back. And finally, like I've been, I've heard about this and I've like wanted to see this movie for a long time. I finally had the chance a few months ago to finally catch it. and. Is a, it's a very short film, but it's a really, it's still like really impactful. And it's such a great, great film. And, you know, she just happens to, Liesl here just happened to find my review of it just recently. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I freaked out, like I teared up. I was just like, like, honestly, I got emotional and I thought, thank you. Like, it meant so much to me. Um, and just the way you wrote it, I could I could feel like it was authentic, and that's how you felt about the film, and it just really made me yeah so happy, because like you say, that's like a really short film. It was the first film I've ever made, but it's nice to know that it's received in a, in a you know like positive light, and that you like the film, and that encourages me to to want to make more films and to see what I can do, and um, I think next time I'll aim for like a you know, like normal short film length, like 20 minutes, maybe 30 minute film. And then hopefully I'll be as bold as Raina and take on a feature. She's brave, hey, Raina's brave. She she goes for things. Um, she, she filmed Hex, I wanna say, she had maybe a week break in between filming, like obviously directing Hex and then shooting triggered. Because I remember chatting to her about it, being like, whoa, you just did this project and now you're starting with this one. Um, that's incredible. And um, yeah, no, she just astounds me really. <laughs> she could she could, be, she could be like a mentor to you when it comes to directing. That's what could happen next. Yes. She could mentor you. Definitely. And yeah, she's she'd be the best mentor. Because like I said, she's so humble and she's she's just a really kind person and one of those people you want to work with because she's just fun to work with and she'll share what she has, like all of her knowledge, she'll, she'll gladly share with you, which is such a beautiful quality that she has, yeah. Yeah, and then a couple of other ca uh, triggered cast members, they're now rising up as well. You know, Michael Potter is on Ubatina Watu who in this really funny role, I, I, I've seen clips and he's just <laughs> he a comedy goal. And then he was in the Slumber Party Massacre reboot, which was actually super like well received in the States. When it came out on Sci-Fi Channel, people <laughs> loved it. They loved the film. They it actually got a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, because- What? I didn't even know this. Yeah. That because is they, great. They loved, they loved the fact that it was me the original was meant to be a satire of the slasher film, and it did that, and then they gender reversed the role, like a bunch of the, the, the horror tropes, where they, like Michael and the guys are more like the scream queens here, and then yeah. Eden Clausen's getting the shower scene kill, and you know, and Rob Van Buren, I, I can't say enough about him. He's he's oh. such he's so funny, but yet he got to play here as Russ Thorne, the, the driller killer himself. And then Rob blew me away in Ludic because I just saw that on Netflix, the the whole series, and I, I'm telling like Rob, Rob is Rob is like getting his. I mean, he is one awesome actor. Even when he doesn't have to, he's amazing. 
he is legendary. I think he's, yeah, he's such an amazing actor. Um, yeah, I can only say, yeah, praise to him because he's just, he's fantastic in every role that he takes on. He just kills it, you know? <laughs> yeah, just... whether it's comedy, whether it's drama, he does it all. I mean, he's just fantastic. And then we have to mention Stephen Ward because he had worked with Alistair before in House on Willow Street. And, yeah. and just so you know, I have seen every one of Alistair's movies since Trigger. I've seen them. The Unforgiving, Ex um, Expiration, Indigenous, House on Willow Street, I've seen them all. And then um, Stephen is going to play in the One Piece Netflix series, which I'm actually looking forward to because I am an anime fanatic. Uh, for those who don't know, I love I love a good anime now and again. You know, I love watching anime <laughs> in my spare time, and you know I'm now start I started One Piece a while back, so I'm like way behind in everyone. But to see him again, to see him play this one character in One Piece, I'm looking forward to seeing him, seeing how that goes. But Stephen Stephen is <laughs> I love Stephen so much. Um, because I had a lots of scenes with him in Trigger, obviously. Yeah. Uh, where it was just the two of us and um just getting to know him offset like he's hilarious like he is probably one of the funniest people i've ever met um <laughs> and it was just a good time it was just always fun when steven was there and i have so much respect for him i think he is also just naturally gifted like i feel like you can just give him a script and he'll he'll like read the line and he'll be like oh Amazing. Yes, you he, he perfect. You know, he just embodies characters so like um, effortlessly. I feel, and um, I I really enjoyed working with him. Um, I'm sure it. It was really a, a lot of fun. The scenes I had with him. <laughs> and I, well, I tell us something else. You've done. You've done your own fashion designing too. I'm, and oh my gosh, like seriously, I'm. What is it you can't do? Because you're just like you. You do a lot, so much. Thank you. Like so many things I can't do, but thank you for, for mentioning these things already. I feel well, so yeah, I mean, you do more than like a lot of people. A lot of people just will stick to one thing, and you know, yeah, yeah. like, but you know, but there's others who do things like me. I'm believe it or not, people. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to reveal what my day job is. I mention the day job all the time, but I am a library cataloger for the last 11, 12 years. So I catalog stuff to go, to go in the libraries. I catalog the materials. And so that's what I do. Awesome. That's, and then I'm also a film blogger. So it's like. Ah, I love that. That's so cool. I love your job. That's amazing. <laughs> that's such a cool job. Yeah, um, and then, yep. And I, and I did used to, I used to play music. I used to play bass guitar in a, in a band back when I was in college. So it's like I. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, you have so many facets to you, you know, like, and um, that's, that's, I love that so much. And that you got to play bass. It's not like the coolest instrument, though. Well, that's because oh, my dad, no. my dad, my dad still plays it now and again. And, you know, he's retired, but, you know, he'll still, he'll still go in his room and once in a while, he'll just start strumming it now and again, you know, his age. Oh, but That's amazing. That's so cool. I, I, yeah, I can speak for hours about music and, and how much I love playing guitar and how much, I don't know if you feel the same way, but when I pick up my guitar, I feel like I transcend into a different like realm. Like yeah. I know I'm being very intense now, like explaining it in that way. I do, But yeah. it, it, it really is like an escape from the world in the best way. And yeah, I wish everyone could experience that. If when I like, cause this room that I'm sitting in now, it, um, I usually convert it into my like mini at home recording studio. And when I put my headphones on and I'm recording, it's like the whole world just disappears, and it's an incredible feeling. It really is just amazing. Um, but sorry, I've, I've veered off topic so much now. Oh, but, we're okay. No, we're, it's okay. That's, that's <laughs> point we i like the flow i like the i like conversations to flow naturally we're just, it doesn't matter it, it we're all good i do that with, i did that with i did that with cameron i did that with michael i did we, yeah we can veer off topic and it's just it's still it still works for some reason for some reason it still works i love me. that because That's it's not so like, great yeah it's not like some of these like other journalists you see when they're interviewing actors and they just like 
not only stick to things, but they like to go too deep into yeah. things. It's like that's not what that's not what I'm yeah. going for. I like I like, no. I like natural flow. It, it works a lot better that way. And it's so much fun. Like I feel like I'm just chatting to you and just having the best time. Like thank and you so much like, for having like, me. It feels like it feels like you're catching up with an old friend. That's what it feels like. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. It's oh, so lovely. And because we have because um, it's, been, it's like I said, it's been for those no, we we used to talk a couple years back, but it's been it's been too long. So it's just like we're catching yeah. up. Now. It's, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. It's been, it's been a while, um, yeah. but what I wanted to say about my clothing label, yes, so I, I started that in 2012, so when I got back from Vancouver, Canada, I decided that I wanted to find like a way, like a creative outlet for myself while I was auditioning and pursuing acting, and it just kind of came about, and that was during the time, believe it or not, where specifically in South Africa, online shopping wasn't a thing. And I can't even imagine that now, but um, it wasn't really a big thing here. So people would literally drive to my house and come buy clothing from me. So it was a really special experience and um, it was just so much fun. And then it went online um, on a shop called Hello Pretty. And yes, and it's been on there for like eight years maybe, longer. And it's just been so much fun for me to feel like I can put my creativity into something. And um, it's so rewarding to to sketch a design and then to make it and be like, voila, like here it is. <laughs> I don't know why I said voila. I meant to say ta -da. <laughs> But you get it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, it's, it's, and that's also been such an amazing journey for me. And, um, and during COVID, I decided to make two wedding dresses that I then um, told people about and be like, okay, if someone needs a wedding dress, because there were lots of people who lost their jobs and didn't have money during that time, please let me know. And then I will cour courier to you and send it to you. And um, that was amazing. Like the, it was received so well. The response I got to that was, was just so special. Yeah, that's why I decided to, to make a second one. And so it, it's nice for me to have like, this outlet and it's something that's always there that I can like tomorrow I can decide to make a new collection and and put it online you know it's 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 so much fun yeah that's that's amazing and yeah you've done it all and you know recently you got your you got a degree in psychology as well so it's, that's another thing we got to mention because you've done that as well like like Siri that's another boom another another mark like what can't you do? What, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I actually want to give credit to my character and friend request, Marina, for for making me think about wanting to study psychology. Um, so she studies it in the film. And not just that, she also has trichotillomania, which is, you know, like a disorder where you pull your hair out. and Yeah. And that I had to do a lot of research on that. And... I just felt to me like studying psychology and acting, it just went hand in hand because I feel like all actors are really curious about human behavior and, and what makes us the way we are. And I honestly, and I know it's going to sound so geeky, but had so much fun studying psychology. <laughs> like, I know, still go through my textbooks sometimes for fun. See, I'm called, see, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm world film geek, so you know, it, geeky is welcome here. <laughs> so it's okay. Sure, sure. All geeks welcome. <laughs> exactly. I love that. I love that so much. Um, I know. Yeah. I will say. Yeah. I also say this. Like I mentioned, Trigger segue me into South African cinema. It actually also like watching these South African films. I'm actually little by little. I'm actually learning a little bit of Afrikaans as we speak. As we speak, I've like been watching videos so i know a few small things that's and it, awesome that's yeah. so cool yeah what do you know what can you say okay so <laughs> i'm gonna try it. <laughs> all right <laughs> put me on the spot all right here we go okay hello ekis albert okay wow i was not ready for anachronomicanus like that was spot on <laughs> well done <laughs> That was amazing. That deserves a slow clap. Seriously, <laughs> that was amazing. I thought you were just going to say, 
maybe something like hello um thought scenes or like you know hi and goodbye you know like something but you know it's funny that, i would yes. i would say that to my coworker. i'd say i'd say i'd say like thought scenes or something like that and she, and my coworker would go like what's just like like, yeah, yeah, like, what? I'm like <laughs> <laughs> no well done that was really good and it sounds accurate like it sounds perfect yeah you i had to work on my pronunciation of, i had to work on pronunciation one thing because i realized your eyes sound like like little short e's in the real and i Learned that from another South African actor, uh, Maria Olson. She does horror films now in the U.S. But um, so I saw a movie called I'm just, now I hope I can pronounce this right. I saw one called Ale Vox Mal S. I saw that with um, Eric. Oh yeah. And, yes, I know that film. Yeah, yes, Ale Vox Mal Yes. So I, I I remember seeing it and Rain is like, oh, you sound a little more Dutch, but you're close. So I'm like, okay, it's that last word. I oh, it's I know it's S now. Is like S Ale Vox Mal S. Yes. That's, uh, I think I got yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Mal is exactly, yes. That's true. It's, it's interesting to hear um, your perspective on, you know, my, my home language that I don't obviously never really think about. For me, it's just like, you know, you just speak your language and you don't really question the different sounds and stuff. So that's so cool to hear that from your perspective. And and you should keep on practicing. Oh, yeah. um, well, and you can come visit here yeah, and then like let me know. So like right now, I'm, let's see, I'm going to say this right. So I'm going to tell you my age right now. I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I say it in Afrikaans. So I'm, and this might sh this shock people because they're like, you do not look your age. I'm like, I know that. Veer and Veer team. Oh my goodness. Wait, okay, wait, are you 44? Yep. Yes, no, I would never have guessed that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and the thing is, um, saying um, numbers in Afrikaans is really tricky because it is. We, we do the opposite. Yeah, we kind of swap it around. A bit. You do the single digit verse, then the tens. That, that's what that's what threw me off. I, but I watched the video on that, and I'm going, they really say yeah. like, all right. So I'm gonna, I got, I need to practice that. Just like to get my age. So yeah, veer and veer. Listen, I still get like caught off guard. Like people will be like, when, when, what year were you born? In English now to me. Now, because you go in Afrikaans, like, um, I have to be like 1991. Like, I have to think about the way I have to um, say it. Well, 37, we'd say the seven first, right? We will say seven, you know? Yeah. Um, so that is quite tricky. So, that's, so well that's, done. That's crazy. I was 12 when you were born. Jesus. <laughs> I was 12 <laughs> when you were born. That's, that's insane. No, I feel like that's very like I don't think that's a big age gap at all. <laughs> Not at all. Okay, yeah. no, <laughs> and I always say like when people pass like twenty um to like twenty or forty, I kind of go like I have no idea. I cannot guess someone's age. I don't know if it's just me. I I kind of feel like that's such a nice like bracket where it's so hard to judge someone's age really and, and it's more about your um ambition and like your the life that you have what do you call it like that that um willingness to still you know have energy and do things yeah exactly that, that's kind of you can then fool people really and, and come across a lot younger or or older even if you do not have that you know but that zest for life i think that's what i was looking for um that that makes people feel a lot younger you know yeah so Exactly. And I've been doing World Film Geek for seven years and I've been writing about films for 20. So like half my, I'm already like halfway, like doing That's films. so cool. That's so special, hey? That's yeah. amazing. Oh no, I think it's so cool that you're so passionate about movies and like writing about it. And, and like I said, like for me, it was such a special experience reading the review of a film I made that you wrote. So I think um, you have so much impact on, on filmmakers. And I think if South African people in the South African film industry should watch this, they would also feel so happy and thankful to know that you are getting into South African films. And um, hopefully the word can spread and um, more of our films can get the recognition that I feel it really deserves, you know? Yeah. I feel like, like you know, you mentioned, you know, you, you asked yourself, you know, would, would 
South African films resonate internationally. And, you know, so what I always say is one is better than none at all. So even if I am like the only one who like relentlessly watch these, it's better than none. That's, that's, that's my take on things. Yes, definitely. Like that, like one person, like that's sometimes all it takes is like, I, I used to go into acting with the mindset of if I can inspire one person or one person can relate to this character that I played or one person was moved by the script that I wrote or, you know, one person, then I can die happy because, you know, like I was that one person who was inspired by Titanic when I was six, you know, and that created my whole journey. Um, it kind of, you know, set it into motion. So I think, yes, all you need is, is one person who's inspired and, you know, that's really all it takes. It is. But, um, I love your shirt, by the way. I keep looking you. at it. But I love your shirt. Cobra Kai. <laughs> so cool. I love it. Oh, my goodness. I would love to have a shirt like that. I like your steel so cool. rolling stones. Oh yeah! Can you see it? Because I was wondering. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> I was like, let's let's just go like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I love the Rolling Stones. So this is my fa one of my favorite shows. <laughs> yeah, one of my, yeah, one of my I got a lot of favorite bands. You know, Metallica, Linkin Park, um, Kiss. Um, I've been listening a lot of a Dutch band, like uh, old Dutch band, Earth and Fire. Recently, they're one of my favorite bands. And, you know. Oh, I have and, heard. Yep, and then I was, I've heard some South, I've heard some Afrikaner singers, not not just you, but uh, Kurt Darren as well. I listen <laughs> to his stuff, and you know, and um, yeah, so I, I do, I do listen to that now and again. That's so cool. And what's your opinion of Diane Ford? Do you know them? Maybe oh. they were a while back. Do you, it's it's actually the Antwerp. But then I know when I was in Canada, well, no, I they think were, I have, I think okay. I had heard of them because they were in a, I think they were in Stone Cold Jane Austen, I think they were, or they were mentioned in it. I've seen Stone Cold Jane Austen. I that movie's hysterical. Um, but I like, I also listen to uh, Die Hugo Fantasties. I've heard there's some. Oh, yes, I love them. The Evil Fantasties. Bill, they're amazing. Bill, they're I love that song. That's like my favorite song from them. Which uh, one? Wilder uh, as the Viltine, I think it's called. Oh yes, oh yes, that, was, that is a good song. I heard that in Agent Two Thousand. I and you know that's another African movie I saw in African movie. Oh yes, I did. You, did you watch that? That's yeah, I've seen so that cool. one. That's awesome. Oh my goodness, I love that you you're listening to Afrikaans music. That is so so cool. Oh, I listen to uh, one of my favorite yeah. um, Afrikaans bands that I would recommend for you is um, Foko Polisikar, which translated you know it's obviously like uh swear word um but it, pro one of the best bands ever and then school is one of my favorite me and my dad's like favorite Afrikaans band at the moment um very tough name i think to pronounce if you're not Afrikaans because it's got that sound to it yeah. oh yeah <laughs> but they're you know, phenomenal um i really really love them and i think they're actually touring internationally at the moment so they're doing really well um but but yeah no i, I can talk about music for ages because i feel like i do not want to live in a world where there's no movies animals music or coffee <laughs> like, oh yeah we, those need, yeah we need our coffee if we don't get coffee like if i don't get my coffee in the morning i turn yeah. into the, i become the grinch okay but like yes. And, yes, yeah, hundred And people, and people right. thought, people thought when I was like, when I was little, I should have been Jim Carrey because I was like, I used to do like the impersonal, the little noises and stuff he does. Uh, like you know. That's so cool. That's so cool. Or the or the sound effects guy in Police Academy because I used to, I used to, you know, I used to get picked on a lot as a kid, so I used humor as a defense mechanism. But you know, I roll with it nowadays. And it's like, hey man, it is what it is. You can call me a geek, a nerd, all you want, but I'm proud of it. It's cool to be a geek now. I think it's cool to be a nerd. And, and I like that you brought that up. I was also like bullied really badly in, in high school. Um, and I remember, well, primary school as well, just, just generally. Um, but, but that being a reason why I wanted to play Marina so badly in Friend Request, because I felt like 
this obviously isn't an isolated experience. I feel like there's so many people who go through that. And it's only when we're older, we, we can kind of own it a bit and go like, okay, that happened to me, you know, and that's okay. Um, but there's so many kids who, who need to hear like, that happens to other people as well. And um, you're not the only one feeling like you're an outsider or nobody wants right. to be afraid of you, you I know? Think, I have to say Marina is like one of the most like like the villains I felt the most sympathy with even though she had to go kill these people but I feel like you know when we see her I feel like she she was the one I sympathized with the most you know and because of that whole bullying thing because that's what led her to do what she does in the rest of the movie and I'm you know, so happy it's perceived in that way because that was what I was trying to achieve was to not just make her like unlikable and just dark and just evil for no reason with no purpose um i wanted to show that you know like we all have so many facets to ourselves and um and maybe if you push someone too far like that is what happens and maybe we should think about the way we treat people maybe yeah. we should be kind of we should go talk to the kid in the corner who doesn't have any friends maybe we should think about these things and um that character to me was just such an amazing um I felt like such a nice platform or an opportunity really to, to reach out to people. Right. Um, and I'm still to this day, it's my, my favorite role that I've played hundred percent. Yeah. Um, if I could do it again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which I did pitch this to Raina while I should, I should start writing it. But you know, when we see the very last shot of you and triggered, you had this like smile on your face and it's just like, that's open-ended. So I was like, I should do, I should come up with a prequel slash sequel where we get to see yeah. the events of Peterson. And then as we see that, we see you going, you know, like Aaron going insane and doing what Peterson did, you know, finding out <laughs> a way to, finding out a way to make the vest and find like, just like the driver who ditched you at the end, you know, cause it looked like, you wanted, looked like you wanted to go after him at, at the end of that. Yeah. I did. I, I, <laughs> That was such a fun scene to shoot. Because <laughs> you know what? We shot that on the last day of home, which I thought was very fitting. Um, and Because that never happens in film, you know? They always shoot out of sequence, and sometimes you shoot the, the last scene first. And it was great because my body was aching at that point. And I think I was actually, I really had a limp by then. Um, and And I was just... That scene was just such a nice way for me to end, you know, the film, but also just the whole filming experience. Um, it, it was great. It was, it was so special. And and what do you think the smile at the end meant, or like I, the smirk, I guess? What what did that? What did I, you make? I think it resonated that you're that you might follow Mr. Peterson's footsteps and start going after randos, putting them, they, putting putting them what they. What you <laughs> I love that you got that from it. I, I love that so much. Um, that's that's hundred percent what I would want people to get from that. Um, and what, and, and I, in a way, Aaron was bullied through the whole film too, by Kate, especially by Cato, because he's telling you to. Oh and it, but then Ezra was the one who told you to you know start talking and put you know get your confidence up. And yes. people like you would never imagine Ezra to be that character, like that kind of person to do that, considering what his character was. But yes. of all yes. people, have him give you that, give Aaron that, that confidence that she was needed at the end. I mean, that's that's something you rarely see in these type of movies these days. Exactly. I, I thought the transitions of the, um, is that the word? Yes, the way the characters transitioned um, or like grew um, throughout the film was really, was really nicely done. Um, and, and for me, it was fun to play Erin where, like you say in the beginning, she barely says anything. And then at the end, she literally finds her voice, if you, if you wanted to see it that way. And yeah, I love playing female characters that have inner strength. And I feel like lots of people will put Erin in a box and they'll be like, she's weak, she's a pushover, she's like this, but, but actually she's very strong. And um even though she was bullied by Kato and went through all of that, she, she came out strong at the end. And, and that's what I loved about her. 
so much. Yeah. That, that, like these two movies, I think, you know, they were, they're phenomenal. And, you know, I can't, I, I, got, I, I hope I get to see you more stuff down the road, you know, once you decide to get acting again, because I'm just going to say this right now, you are one of my favorite actresses and I'm really, you know, like, no way, no yeah, way. Yeah. Even though you did two films, I could put you like, who, you know, which actresses do you like? And I'm like, you all need to see Lisa Ehlers because she's, if you see Prime Request and Triggered, she's just phenomenal in these two movies. You know, just the way she performs. Thank, Thank you. I am so flattered. Like, so, so very flattered. Um, I'm, there might be a film coming out that I'm, I'm the lead in. So we shot this film just before we shot Triggered in 2019. Um, sorry, 2018. I'm, I can't remember now. The years are just blurring. Um, but I had like, a, I think a month break and then we started shooting Triggered. So this other film is called The Construct. Um, and I wasn't sure if it was going to see the light of day, but um, it might come out on Netflix soon. So. Oh, well, if it does, <laughs> I'm looking out for it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so there's that maybe. And um, but yes, like I said, my, my passion for the film industry and making films and and being involved like behind the scenes and I, I don't think that could ever go away. I think that's part of who I am and I'm proud of that and I would love to contribute to the film industry in some way still. So you'll be the first to know when I do make uh, a ducky or I do make another film. I'd love for you to watch it. Yes, and I'll and and we'll definitely have to chat again about about the new projects when they once they come out. Be awesome. That'd be so good. Thank you. That'd be so lovely. Um, no, yes, I, I feel like once the the film industry bug bit you, like you know, it's always going to be there. Your love for for acting or being behind the scenes that's always going to stay there. It's very yeah. special. Definitely. And you've come a long way and, you know, while you're acting, you've got all these other stuff you're doing now as well. So you've, you're like a Jill of all trades now, basically you've done, you, you're doing it all. And, you know, it's so lucky. And the, the fact that I get to see you do all these other projects, I mean, that's really amazing, you know, so. Thank really you. I really appreciate that. Albert. That means so much to me. Um, yeah, just, it's it's so it's so kind of you to yeah I just feel very flattered and the fact that you listen to my music and all of that like to me music was just more of a hobby for so long and well it's only really been and I have this dream of pursuing it more full time but it's so nice to hear and have that encouragement from you so I really appreciate it. That's so awesome. Much. Well, this is this has been a great chat. I've been, I've really enjoyed talking. I'm glad we got to catch up. And talk about the all mm -hmm. everything you've been doing, and I had I've had I've had a total blast with you today. No, it's been amazing. Like it really feels like catching up with an old friend and just chatting about whatever comes up. And um, yeah, so amazing to chat with you about martial arts and just everything. And I hope we can do it again soon. Oh, definitely we will. We'll, we're definitely going to keep in touch after this, without a doubt. Lovely. Um, and yes, well, thank, thanks again for having me. It's been, it's been so much fun. All right. Well, check out worldfilmgeek.com reviews. Check out our interviews on YouTube. And in April, we are revamping the World Film Geek podcast into movies that need more love. So we're going to talk about movies that are underrated and, you know, deserve more appreciation. So that's coming out in April. We got our first episode set with uh, 1980 film Spetters. So until then, you all take care. And uh, thank you again, Liesl. You've been just amazing to talk to and <laughs> really stoked to have a chat with you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Anytime. This has been so much fun. All right. Well, I hope everyone has a great day. And you all take care. <laughs>